It's Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. And it's coming up next. Downtown between Brush Street and I-375. That's where we're located in the heart of Detroit at Ford Field, which first opened back in 2002. Today we've got an NFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Detroit Lions. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, the wait is over. The regular season is upon us. It is kickoff weekend around the NFL. Our two teams here getting in a final tune-up, but let's look ahead to the 2023 season. What are you going to be watching for? How about some of the recognizable new faces in new places? Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, Odell Beckham Jr. The identity of teams under new coaches in places like Houston, Carolina, and Denver. And then, of course, the rookies. After the draft, we want to see how they perform. Here's the punter, Bradley Pinion, on to get us started. And we are underway from Ford Field. Here's Khalif Raymond to return. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Well, the Lions offense getting ready to go to work here. And under center, a man whose career has been rejuvenated a bit as of late. In season number eight now out of Cal, it's Jared Goff. Rumors of Goff's demise? Greatly exaggerated, it seems. Boy, what a big year he had last year. 29 touchdowns and led the Lions to their first winning season since 2017. Under his leadership, the Lions expect to make the playoffs for the first time in a few seasons. Now the former Bear, this is David Montgomery. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. They'll take that, 14 yards on play number one. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. They'll go with a rookie from Alabama. It's Jameer Gibbs. And a good physical run that time. He's going to wind up gaining five on that one. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Second and five. Goff now looks to throw. That's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first and 10, here's Gibbs. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Second down and eight. Out of the gun. Golf. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, here's gone. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Lorenzo Carter in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. 
It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. The Falcons ready to go to work here on offense. And at the helm in his second season, Charles, it's Desmond Ritter. The Falcons got their feet wet with Ritter during a four-game audition last season. And he did end their year with a pair of wins. Optimism reigns that he is their quarterback of the future. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. They'll get this to his tight end. It's Johnny Smith. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 21, here's second down and three. One of only two rookies to top a 1,000 yards on the ground last year. Here's Tyler Algier. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Now they need two. Here's third down. Algier will try to pick it up. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Strong start by this defense. Third and short, they go with a run. Stonewall for no gain. I played for a guy who always talked about setting tones and meeting force with force. That felt like it on that play, didn't it? And they met it in a big way and won. What a great job by the defense. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And take it right on the 30. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. And the Lions will take over. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Drive starts with a run from Gibbs. And a six-yard gain gets them right around the 43. If you're in the offensive puddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain? Or do they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Another run for Gibbs here. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Goff wants to throw on third and one. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. On first and ten, Goff. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now, here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. 
Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now golf. And that will be incomplete as well. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. And this is off the left upright. And it comes back. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. And anytime you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through. And that one winds up no good. So the missed 56 yarder and now the flip side good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. Here's the eighth overall pick from Texas. It's B. John Robinson. And he's able to break through one tackle but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. Defensively though they had a chance there to hit him for a loss couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Looking to throw it here. Ritter. Going to let one fly for Robinson. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, it was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Ritter now. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's four. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And, partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second... Run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Great run by Gibbs. He surprised me by being picked so early in the draft. But the Lions knew when they had the chance to add a playmaker like him, they absolutely couldn't pass him up. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now it's gone. Completing it here, Marvin Jones. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. 
And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 41. Gone. Reynolds with a catch out on the right side. They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. Goff now to throw. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. And St. Brown going to have the Lions first down as he'll get this down to the 30-yard line. Goff to St. Brown for the Detroit first down. Off play action. Here's Goff. That is caught, Josh Reynolds. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. The Lions passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Golf. That's to the pylon and incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways call this penalties. Second and ten. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he'll be taken down here at about the eleven. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here, they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice, tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. On fourth down, Goff to the sidelines, and Detroit has Riley Patterson out there for the field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Patterson's kick is good, and the Lions are going to take a 3-0 lead. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD, and it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They've struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. On play action, here's Ritter. 
Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw, Ritter. He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football as they've got it with a second and 10. Out of the gun, here's Ritter. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Umpire threw the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Here's a screen for Robinson, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with a little gain. Now here's Bradley Pinion now. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Taking it about the 16. And now off to the is down the right side. Touchdown, Detroit. That'll go down as an 84-yard punt return. And the Lions are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. When you've got a guy that fast back there to receive punts, that's a nightmare for the guy game planning, the special teams coach, but it's also a nightmare for the punter. Sometimes they get so nervous that they miss hit the ball and kick it right to him. Riley Patterson now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. Well, we know he has home run hitting ability in the punt return department, and he showcases it there all the way back for six. So after surrendering the punt return for a score, let's see what they can do in turn on this kickoff. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive.
Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets him ready at the 33-yard line. Ritter will set up to throw it. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now a second and 10. Here's Ritter. Oh, and that is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Ritter throwing on third down. And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. And yeah, Detroit back in possession of the football. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And they start things off with a carry by Gibbs here. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there and a line first down. There was a little space there, yes, but that was a well-executed run by the rookie. It was, and he wasn't one of the higher-rated rookie running backs coming out. He's probably on the next tier. But let me tell you something. If he becomes more consistent and continues to have that drive to be one of the best, we'll see more of that in the future. That's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. The Goffs throw into the hands of Reynolds here. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And it's second down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. So from the 37, here's second and three. Goff now looking to throw. A little short pass here taken in by LaPorta. Well, they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Now back to the ground. Here's Gibbs. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. 49 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Throw left side, caught by LaPorta. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. I know sometimes we can get forward when we watch inmate catches, as we just saw him do there, because 
He really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. That run wasn't a big breaker, but I don't think the guys on offense mind very much. They've got a nice drive going, and they might just be luring the defense in a little bit. They could probably come back with a play action, maybe go over the top. But right now, on this drive, their playbook is open. And the Lions are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. One man in the backfield, that's Jones. Back to throw, Goff. And he's got it. They'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Gibbs will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. No gain on the play there, and they're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want to back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. On fourth down, Goff to the sidelines, and Detroit has Riley Patterson out there for the field goal. Patterson's kick is good. But now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. And that flag accepted. So now then the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Montgomery is in for a Lions touchdown. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. For this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that makes our score 17-0. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but well, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's, that's not a good combination. 
I think you just you called it. I think you just called a desperation time. <laughs> I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it. You mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 23, here's the second down and four. Again, it's Robinson. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Robinson will try to pick it up. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And this is scooped up by the Lions. And they're going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. He was trying to do anything he could to get that final little bit for the first down. Instead, he lost the ball. Yeah, and he was short of the first down, but not by much. Trying his best, as you noted, to get there. Sometimes that extra effort can cost you. But Jameer Gibbs in the Lions offense getting set once again. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable. And really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards you've really done some damage in an nfl game and now he's looking just to add to his totals following the fumble recovery golf and his throw here is incomplete tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the nfl but if you drop the football that position could get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. On second down, here's Gibbs. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Throwing on third, golf. And the throw there going to be incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. Patterson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the formal recovery had them set up in ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt here. They take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Patterson. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Bijan Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. And Charles, he's a rookie. He's put it on the ground once, maybe defensively. Now they're saying, okay, we can get this young buck to cough it up two, three times. He's got to be careful here. Yeah, they do tend to zero in on the young runners because once one comes out, as you noted, you think there's an opportunity for more. This is where you have to get with that guy and say, all right, they're going to come after you, but we believe in your talents. Take care of the football and let's go. That's out quickly to London. Two yards on the pickup there, and it's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Here's a second and eight.
Robinson up the middle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Atlanta. Now that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him, giving him the ball again, and he repaid him, picking up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Ritter to throw it. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Ritter. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And attempted a deep ball there, they didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Ritter with it after the play fake. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Boy, that ball's just hanging up there waiting to be intercepted. That looked doomed from the start. But they took the deep shot anyway. And fortunately, it winds up incomplete. On now to punt. Here's Bradley Pinion. He gets this away as he'll wisely, I'd say, angle this to the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Now a throw downfield is taken in by his running back. And they will get him down, but not before he gets very good yardage there. As that will lead us right into the two-minute warning. From Falcon territory now, here's first and ten at the 44-yard line. Goff now looks to throw. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. A little juke. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Second down and a yard. Goff. And he is going to lose yardage here. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Here's Gaw. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They give him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Now a first down throw, gone. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Reynolds. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. 
Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Gibbs will try and pick it up. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Defensively, they rally the troops to force fourth down after that seven-yard pickup back on first. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. Patterson's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime here in Detroit with the Lions out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up, ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It'll be Falcons football, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. Now it's Patterson. Fighting his way through contact. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. Second half begins with a run by Robinson. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here's a second and nine now from the 29. A Ritter back to throw. His throw incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. River located his running back, Robinson. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Ritter's throw into the hands of Pitts here. 
And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as he'll take this down to the 44-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Ritter now. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Looking to throw it here. Ritter. And he comes back with one complete. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. Just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. 56 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Second down, ball on the three. First down marker at the one-yard line. Ritter. Incomplete. They've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Third and short, Ritter. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Desmond Ritter taking it in from four yards out. And the Falcons are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. Hey, you're down on the scoreboard, but now your offense is in close, and this is where, as a quarterback, you say, I've got to make a play here. Doesn't matter whether it's a pinpoint throw or a scramble like this one. He takes matters into his own hands and delivers a touchdown run. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. 
And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You could say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. On first down, gone. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that will bring up second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Gibbs straight ahead, and he'll push forward to the 37, gain of two. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's third and seven. Now it's gone. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. That'll be a 47-yard punt officially, five on the return. And it will be Falcon football. Atlanta regains possession of the football. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They begin the drive with Robinson. Shifts by him at the 25. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. From the 25, here's a second and four. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. No surprise, Robinson is looking like one of the best running back prospects we've seen in a long time. He became the face of the Atlanta football team the second he was drafted, and he should be ripping off big runs for them for years to come. On first down, Ritter. And his throw is incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's second and ten. Ritter off to play fake. That one will be incomplete. He caught it but could not stay in bounds for the long connection. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Working from the gun, River. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. They overload time of the safety blitz and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven looks like another empty possession here partner and i don't think with three scores down in the third quarter they can truly afford any more the rest of the way no especially the way their offense is sputtering i think you're exactly right they got to find some answers quickly 
On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Detroit getting set to go now. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10. Just shy of the 30. He'll begin by dropping it off to Montgomery. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first and 10, here's Gibbs. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That play disrupted and stopped for a loss by linebacker Troy Anderson. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Now gone. That is caught. Josh Reynolds. Seven catches for him now on this last one. A first down. That certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 43. From the gun, here's Goff. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. So second and 10 now here in the third quarter from Detroit. Here's Goff. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing on third, Goff. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Goff and his guys not coming off the field. They're going for this. Back to throw again. And it's going to be batted down. And will go the other way with the football. The Lions turned away on fourth down. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. Now, that's just simply good coaching and excellent technique on that play. You know why? Because wow. everyone wants to rush the passer when they want to throw the football. But you're not always going to get there. So what are you taught to do? When the ball's finally thrown, get your hands up in the passing lanes and they batted that one away. No, 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 no. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Short throw caught by Pitts. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Ball start. Awesome. 
Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys come and pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Now Ritter. Targets Miller here on the out route. He's got him. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, Robinson. He juked him. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. 76 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. And that's why he's been a first-round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him. Ritter on first and 10. And caught by London. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. On the give, here's Robinson. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Off the play fake, it's Ritter. This pass is caught by London. And they're into the end zone, but it's not verified yet. Hold on, there is a flag down. So retract the yardage and retract the touchdown. And retract the chunk play. Big strike there to get the touchdown. Now they've got to take it back and see if they've got another one still in their arsenal. Ritter will set up to throw it. Short throw to Smith. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Second and six. Here's Ritter. Throwing left side here. Complete. Touchdown! Mac Hollins from 21 yards away. And the Falcons have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that drive goes eight plays. And the Falcons score to cap it off.
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Now, all of a sudden, we've got an interesting game here. You just saw them go down and score a touchdown. And what was a comfortable lead at halftime, it's down to a two-score game. And so the obvious thought is they've got to ramp things back up again. Got to get the offense into high gear. But we've seen this before. When you've kind of been in shutdown mode for a while, thinking that you're okay, it's hard to mash the gas again and have everything work perfectly. They've got to fashion together a good drive right here and now. Because defensively, got to be feeling confident they haven't allowed a point this half. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 54 yards rushing for him now to this point. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it. But what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of momentum. The other side is starting to gain. The Lions on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and four. Goff now looks to throw. And that is incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Gun. Here's Ritter. And a dump off here to Robinson. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Gotta get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Ritter now on second down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it. Don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Ritter from the gun. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So here come the Lions now. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Goff in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10. Just shy of the 30. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air, and defensively, 
They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Out of the gun, golf. Throw to St. Brown, complete on the left side. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Here's Gaw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Here comes the Lions punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and they will take over first and 10. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, that's pretty symptomatic about how things have gone here. That play was just shut down right from the start. And not going to give him a lot of confidence to help turn things around. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Back to throw, Ritter. Targeting Pitts on the out route, and he's got it complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. On the counter, this is Robinson. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. Meanwhile, Ritter's throw into the hands of Pitts here. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 37. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Well, this is Smith with the grab. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. It's a gain of 35. And here's a spot where this offense says, we got to start making something happen. We're down two scores. It's the fourth quarter. We've got to start moving with some urgency. And here's a big play that gives them a ray of hope that they can get back in this one. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Algier will score. Touchdown Atlanta. Just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Ku able to connect on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter.
Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Time for another look at this Lions offense. They've been asleep for a little while on this side of the football, Charles, and the score is just a one-score game now. Haven't had any points this half. What gives? Let's go old school here. All right, let's get back to the basics. Get back to running the football. High percentage throws. Find the guys that eat pressure and make plays for you and make sure they touch it. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 18. Goff now looking to throw. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 23 yards on the play. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Goal. Targets and finds Reynolds once more. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Counter play. Here's Gibbs. Oh, good move. And able to get this to the 31. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Here's Goff now on second down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's right. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 19. 12 yards there as they move the chains. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And it's caught. And in for the Lions. Touchdown. Josh Reynolds from 19 yards away. And the Lions get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 21. Ritter. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down, but give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. 
but it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. Ritter back to throw. Into the hands of London. And he's taken down right away at the 39-yard line. Ritter and London team up there. First down, Atlanta. But correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Ritter now. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Well, oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Ritter to throw it. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To the air again, it's Ritter. And that will be incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Fourth down, big play. Here's Ritter. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Lions will get the football back in terrific field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur so they can't let that dream go just yet they have to get stout on defense here yeah right now really hoping for a turnover straight ahead with Gibbs here and he's brought down at the 34 call it a gain of four Brandon you know how many times we've done games and at the start of the fourth quarter we see both teams hold up the four fingers fourth quarter is ours well how about this drive you saw the four fingers for four minute offense and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Yeah, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back... And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Lorenzo Carter able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. I think a lot of time when we see a sack, you say, well, you blame it on the offensive line, the quarterback, but here, maybe you just tip your hat to the defender. What a play. Yeah, and I think sometimes they just get a sense of the play before the ball's even snapped. Kind of like a sprinter anticipating the gun in a race. They're off, and guess what? The quarterback's down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Riley Patterson on. A lot of pressure on this kick. This will be from 56 yards out. And he missed it. It's no good. And the lead will hold at 10. Now, Charles, all things considered, I guess that's not a critical miss at this stage, is it? No, but still everything helps when you're trying to finish off a ball game. And you're right. Not critical in terms of the scoreboard and the team, but the guy with the golden foot... He knows he's only as good as his last kick. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Well, they didn't fall behind any further thanks to that missed field goal, but still staring at this fourth quarter deficit.
Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 46. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's going to be caught by Pitts. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and ten. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion, so I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. And he's got his man in stride, complete. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Ritter. Escaping the pressure right. And the Falcons are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. Oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here. Give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. Now Ritter. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Time definitely of the essence now. Just under a minute to play, and here we go. And this will be covered up by the Lions, and that might just about seal the deal. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Let's go, man. Let's go, boy. Let's go. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. 
He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. And the Lions will take the knee here with victory in the cards. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And they will take a knee here. Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. and maybe the outcome of this one, Charles, would have been different, but ultimately time runs out on the comeback, so it falls short, and they hold on to win this by just one possession. Not the fourth quarter they wanted, but they did earn the win, and they'll be happy about that, and they should be. Now they're going to go back to practice, see what they can do to prevent a future lead from slipping away like this one was. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Lions as we say so long from Ford Field.